Hi, sixth graders. We are working on lesson 5-7 today on solving unit rate problems. You can open to page 306. Please follow along in your book as we are working. Page 306. Our essential question today is, how can you use unit rates to solve problems? Let's take a look at example number one. The jet flies at a constant speed. Constant speed means that the speed stays the same over time. If the jet continues to fly at the same rate, how far could it fly in 85 minutes? We have to use what we know. We know the jet flies 175 miles in seven minutes. So one way we can use unit rates to solve is with a chart. So if I fill in what I know, I know it can go seven minutes, it can go 175 miles, so 175 miles in seven minutes. Now if I want to use a unit rate, I need to figure out one of my numbers over one. So in this case, we want our unit rate per minute, so we're trying to find our time per one minute. So if I take my seven minutes, and 175 miles, and I set it up equal to one minute, I can solve. I can use that crisscross trick that we learned to help. I know that my two that are connected are 175 and one. So 175 times one is just 175. And then I'm going to divide it by that third number. If I do that, I'm going to take 175 divided by seven. I know it fits two times is 14. 17 minus 14 is 13. Bring down my five. I know it fits, whoops, one, <laughs> it's only three. 17 minus 14 is three, that was a close one. Bring down my five. I know five divided by seven, 35 <laughs> divided by seven is five. 5 times 7 is 35, 35 minus 35 is 0. So I know in one minute I would have 25 miles. Sorry, I mixed up all those words. All right, we're off to a good start. <laughs> Happy Monday, right? All right, let's keep going. Now that I have my unit rate per one minute, I can use that to help me solve how far it would go in 85 minutes. So here I'm going to start with my one minute minute, 25 miles, and then I'm going to set it equal to what I'm trying to find. I'm trying to find 85 minutes. I can use my crisscross, or in this case, since I'm going from 1 to 85, it's easy for us to look and see that we are multiplying both by 85. If I take, I should have brought some paper today, take my 85 times 25, 42, 10, 16, 17, 11, 2,125. And I'm going to look at my chart. That's where this number comes from, 2,125. So now I know it can fly 2,125 miles in 85 minutes. All right, so the chart is just filled in. It's very similar. This next another way is pretty much what we just did, but we had to use this to be able to fill in our chart. So kind of both examples go together. We'll stick to our strategies that we know, but you can definitely use this to fill in your chart. So once I know my rate per, or if I know my unit rate per minute, I can use that for any number of minutes as I solve. Let's take a look at our try it at the bottom. At the same rate, how far would the jet fly in 75 minutes? So I'm going to take that unit rate we just found. Our one minute is 25 miles. So in one minute, 25 miles. I know I'm trying to get to 75 minutes. So one times 75 would give me my 75. I take my 25 also times 75. Whatever I do on one part, I have to do the same on the other. Then I am multiplying to figure out my answer. Hopefully you're following along and doing this on your paper as well. You can use calculators. I'm just doing it by hand to show how quick and easy it is. 
All right, taking our 1,875. So I know the jet would fly 1,875 miles in 75 minutes. If you have your chart made, you also could have used this. Um, a few different ways to help you solve. You could have looked at 25. You could have done 25 times 3. And then your 625 times 3 would have been another way to find your answer. You also could have looked and saw 25 plus 50 is 75. So you could have added 625 plus 1,250 to get your answer. So if you do have a chart like this one, you can answer a lot of different questions without having to do the whole setup if you use what you know that's already there. All right, let's take a look at example two. But first, I'm going to see if I can figure out how to do this. I want to show you some student math memes that your class created. All right, example number two, using our unit rates to help us solve price problems. So here we have grocery giant is having a sale on Swiss cheese. How much would it cost to buy five slices of cheese at the same rate? So if I look, I know you can buy 24 slices for $7.20. We can use that rate to help us solve our unit rate to find the price per one slice. If I do that, I'm setting it up equal to one slice. 24 divided by 24 will get me to one. So I'm also taking $7.20 divided by 24, and I find our unit price of 30 cents per slice. If I use that same unit rate now, I can use it to help solve how much five slices would cost by setting it up equal to five slices. I know one times five will get me to five, so I'm doing the same thing on top. 30 cents times five is $1.50. So at the same unit rate, it would cost $1.50 for five slices of cheese. Let's try it. Jared paid $13.80 for five tickets to the game. At the same rate, how much would it cost for three tickets? So we're going to start with our rate that it gives us, $13.80 for five tickets. I want to find the unit rate for one ticket. So I'm going to set it up equal to one ticket. I'm going to take my five divided by five. I know will get me to one. If I do the same thing on top, now I'm solving $13.80 divided by five. I'm going to let you use calculators to speed it up. So $13.80 divided by five gives us a unit rate of $2.76. Now that I know the cost per one ticket, $2.76 per one ticket, we can use that to find the cost for three tickets. So when I set it up, I know one times three will get me to three. So I need to do the same thing on top. So I'm going to take that $2.76 times three, and I get an answer of $8.28. So now I know the cost for three tickets at that rate would be $8.28. All right, example three. Here we have using equations to represent our unit rate problems. A ferry boat travels at a constant speed of 57 and a half miles in two and a half hours. How long would it take the ferry boat to travel 92 miles at this same rate? All right, so when you are using distance and time, figuring out a constant speed, you can use this formula, distance equals rate times time. So if we do that, we're going to set up our equation, distance equals rate times time. We're going to use what we know. I know the ferry boat travels at a rate of 23 miles per hour. So I'm going to plug in my uh, 23 miles. All right, that's my rate, miles per hour. I could use it times any time since my miles already 1. I know 23 times 1 
So time now I can replace with anything. And I'm trying to figure out how far, how long it would take to go 92 miles. So my distance now is 92. So when I plug in 92 equals 23 times our time, I can set it up and solve. I want to get the T by itself. So this is showing I would divide both sides by 23 to cancel it out. And then 92 divided by 23 is 4. So it would take 4 hours to go. Oops, sorry. Yeah, 4 hours. I thought I read that backwards. 4 hours to go 92 miles. All right, one last try it. A submarine travels at 19 miles in half an hour. Write an equation to find out how long it would take to travel 57 miles at our same rate. So we'll start with our distance equals rate times time. We know our um, submarine travels 19 miles in half an hour. I want to know my rate has to be per one hour. So in order to get this, I have to do one half times two to get one hour. So I'm going to do my 19 times two. I know that 19 times two is 38. So now I know 38 is my rate. And then my distance is going to be 57 miles, plugging that in. Now I can solve getting that unknown by itself by dividing both sides by 38. Now my T is by itself. I'm going to grab that calculator here and do 57 divided by 38. Now I know it can or it would take one and a half hours to make it 57 miles. All right, your work is scheduled for you today. You have IXL and MathXL. Make sure if you have questions, you're asking for help. Remember, if you're stuck and our guest teacher is not able to help you and your classmates are not able to help you, you can skip things on MathXL. Just do not hit submit until you have a chance to have me help you on it.